bubbles. Nothing says summer to me than sitting out on a beautiful day like today with the birds chirping in the blue sky and blowing soap bubbles. <laughs> Hi, I'm Laura and this is Upcycle Friday Fun with Laura, part of WPSU's virtual summer camps. You can find more videos and activities at wpsu.org slash virtual summer camps. So today on Upcycle Friday, we're going to use some materials that you're going to normally recycle and use them to make some bubble blowing wands and see if we can change the size or the shape of the bubble. Then we're going to use a straw, some temper paint and construction paper to see if we can make a bubble painting. So let's head on over to the shop. We'll make our bubble blowing wands and then we'll come back and experiment and have some fun. Okay, so I've saved three different kinds of water bottles from my uh, recycling that I do. I have this smaller bottle here, and then these are basically the same. They're just a little bit different shapes, but we're gonna do three different things with these bottles. So the first one that we're gonna do is just use this bottle, and we're going to cut around the bottle so that the bottom half is completely gone. Now this one, we are going to cut it around the same kind of area and we're gonna use an old sock to put over this and you'll see what happens with the bubbles. And finally, this one's nice and easy because I just have to cut off this little piece down here and we're going to put some straws that I've been saving up inside of this one. So we have three different kinds of bubble wands from recycled bottles. I have all three of my bottles cut and basically they're the same size. We're just gonna do different things with them. So this first one, we're gonna leave it as is and see what kind of bubble that makes. For the second one, I'm gonna use this old sock that I found in my sock bin and I'm going to cut it smaller so we don't have all this stuff to work with. There we go. And then this is going to go over the bottle Ooh, this is a little tricky. Like that, kind of pull it so that it's, you know, tight on, not like tight, but a little bit. And then I think I'm going to get some rubber bands out of my rubber band box. Let me see if I can just use one and put it around the bottle just so it doesn't slip right and we could even fold that down so we can see better what we're doing when we dip it into the, the bubble solution. Now this last one I have been saving some straws and I have several of them you see and we're going to take these and cut them each so that they fit down in here and I'm gonna fill this whole area with straw so let me cut those up and then we'll see what it looks like. This bubble blower took me about five minutes to cut all of the straws and each one of them that I used, I could get two pieces out of it. So I measure one, two, three inches. This is just my bottle. You would measure whatever fit best in your bottle. And then of course I have all these little pieces over here and we'll save those and use those in a craft coming up in a little bit. So I'm gonna to try to get these last two in there see there's quite a number of straws and then i'm gonna kind of put them whoops <laughs> put them down on something to keep them even okay wow and since we have our band our uh, rubber band box already out i'm gonna look for one that i can use to hold these together but not really bend the straws. All right. Oh, that's tight, but that's good. Okay, rubber band box back over here. I'm going to push these down so they're all even on the bottom, right? And then these go in the bottle. So we're going to blow in this end. We're going to dip this into the bubbles and blow in this in and we'll see how many bubbles come out the other side. So we have our straw bubble maker 
We have our sock bubble maker and we have our bottle bubble maker. The last one I'm going to do is cut out the milk jug and I'll just do a quick cut on that and then we will go back outside and see what happens. Okay, are you ready to see how our bubble makers work? Let's start out with the first one, which is just our plain cut bottle. We'll dip it in the bubble solution. Whoop, it popped. Let me try it again. Whoop. Oh, it makes big bubbles, but they don't seem to want to stick on the end of this bubble blower. All right, let's skip to this one. We'll try this one with all of the straws that are inside. Let's see what happens with it. Ooh, <laughs> tiny bubbles. How about that? That's fun. Now let's try this one. Now this is the sock and you see the sock has little air spaces in it, right? Because it's fabric. Let's see what happens when we blow the solution through it. Whoa, did you see that? Let's try it again. Wow. That is really cool. Woo, I'm out of breath. One more time. Oh my gosh, it's like a bubble bath. They're everywhere. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so we have our milk jug. Let's see what it does. Dip it in. Hmm. I think it's too big. I don't think it's going to work. Eh. Okay. Now, I was in my kitchen when I was taking a break and I found this spoon. It has these holes in it, but they're not round holes. So I wondered if this could be used as a bubble wand. Let's try it and see what happens. Okay. Woo. Not bad. You know, if, if you just woke up this morning and said, I feel like blowing bubbles, you could find something like this in your kitchen, get some dish soap and some water, and you're ready to blow bubbles. Woo, that one popped on me. So I think we have two that work really well, right? We have the one with the tiny bubbles and we have the one with the long string of bubbles. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> so there you go. We experimented with lots of different things and I think we found at least two that work really well. So let's go back into the shop. We're gonna get our paint ready to do our bubble painting. That's pretty awesome. Before we get started on our bubble painting today, let's talk a little bit about color. So these are temper paints, and I have a red bottle, a yellow bottle, and a blue bottle. And these are called primary colors because it doesn't take a combination of other colors to make them, they're pure colors. But the interesting thing is you can take these and you can make other colors from them. This is what I mean. So we're gonna put red here, yellow, and blue. These are the primary colors. Now, what would you think you would combine together to make orange? Well, you can combine yellow and red to make orange. And you can combine yellow and blue to make green. And you can combine 
red and blue to make purple. So now we have six colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. These are the primary colors and orange, green, and purple are called the secondary colors. So what we're gonna do today is take our paints and mix the primary colors together, two of them, to make a secondary color. So I'm gonna take red first. I'll put a little red in this dish, a little yellow, and some blue. Now I'm gonna go back and combine yellow and red to make orange. Get something to mix that up with. See how it's changing color? It's turning into a different color. Put a little bit more yellow in there, maybe brighten it up. Okay, so that is red and yellow to make orange. So the next one we're gonna do is we will take blue and yellow and we're gonna make green from it. Look, I can already see the green coming through. Right? That's pretty good. And then finally, we're going to take red and blue and we're going to make some purple. I'll squirt a little red in there. And we're gonna make purple. I love the color purple, it's so pretty. Hmm, I'm gonna put some more blue in there. I wanna make it really bright. And that's the thing, you can add a little bit more of red or a little bit more yellow and decide how you want it to look. Okay, now comes the soap bubbles. And we're gonna just pour some of this in. It's probably gonna be a little messy. We'll just give this a try. One, two, three. Yeah, that really helps you see the colors better, doesn't it? We're gonna mix this up. Maybe just a little more yellow in there. Yeah, I like that better. And finally the green. You have to mix it up or the paint will go to the bottom and it won't show up very well. I've moved our bubbles with the paint into different containers and actually I've added more paint and more bubble solution because I wanted to get it as close to the top as possible and that will make our bubbles stand out more. So what we're gonna do with these is we're gonna take a straw and we're gonna blow into the bubbles, but make sure that you don't suck the bubble stuff back into your mouth. So I'm gonna try to do this, see how it works out. Wow, lots of bubbles. Okay, so watch this. I'm gonna take this and lay it on top. Cool. <laughs> okay, let me try one with the green. Make sure that paint isn't in the bottom. Then I'm gonna blow into it. Makes a funny sound, doesn't it? Okay, let's put the green one here. Oh, that one didn't quite work as well. I wonder why, but it's still neat. Now this last one, I'm gonna get, uh, take the straw and I'm gonna use this, but you can use a pen and poke a, a little hole into it because I, read that this will keep you from sucking it up into your mouth. 
All right, so we're going to stir the purple and then make bubbles. Wow, that's fun to just watch. Put this one in the middle. Ooh, that's turning out cool, isn't it? Let's see, maybe I'll try another purple. And put it down in this corner right here. All right. And maybe go back to the green. Look at all those bubbles. I'm going to then just put it back on there like that. Wow. So see these bubbles on here? They will pop or you can just take your finger and just pop them like that. See? Pop, pop, pop. But they will pop on their own. Now you see all the different patterns we're starting to get as the bubbles pop? That's what makes it really pretty and interesting. Let me go back to the orange. <laughs> and I'm going to put that right down in this corner. Yeah. Maybe I'll do another one over here. at that. See how it's starting to really become something that looks like a piece of art? Ooh, I almost put the paint side into my mouth. That would be yucky. I like watching the bubbles as they're coming in. So I could just keep going over this and over this as much as I wanted to and really make it look interesting with all of these little bubble pieces on here. We've been talking and playing a lot today with bubbles. So this week's workshop tool I wanted to bring to you was a level. Now these are used to make sure something is completely straight when it's horizontal or completely straight when it is vertical or it's also called plumb. Now builders use these a lot when they're making frames to make sure that they, they aren't off. But one of the common uses for one this size is if you have something that you're hanging on your wall. So I couldn't maybe quite tell once I hang it up whether it's straight or not. So this level, I can put it on the top with the bubble in the center between these two black lines and that will show me that this is now level, horizontally level. Now, if I wanted to build a wall and I'm using something like this, I can put it up this way. And you see that bubble when it's in the center, it shows that that wall is completely straight vertically up and down or what they call plumb. So this level has three little tubes in it that can help me make sure that I'm getting something level. And it also has a ruler that is in inches as well as centimeters on the bottom. I hope you had fun this week experimenting with bubbles. I know I did. Now, if you wanna know more about the science behind bubbles, you can go to scienceu.org and look for the square bubble video. Square bubbles? Yes, you can actually make a square bubble, but you've got to go to the video to check it out. Now, if you want to look for more summer 
virtual camp videos, you can go to WPSU's website, wpsu.org slash virtual summer camps. I look forward to seeing you soon and we'll find out what new kind of adventure we can discover together. Thanks a lot. Bye.